Welcome to part two. You are the brave few who uh, trudge on. I already stopped laughing. Okay, so, so here I am in Photoshop, and what you're looking at are hands, beautiful hands. They're mine. And uh, if you have a picture phone, which you probably do, you can take your own reference shot. So that's what I do every time I need. So, well, you know, I used to ask my hands to hold, or my hands. <laughs> I used to ask my friends to hold out their hands, and uh, so that I could draw them. But nowadays, you can do it all yourself. You can see exactly what you're taking pictures of. Um, so. As you can see, I didn't draw hands, I just took a picture and then drew over it. And it's very, very easy for you to do the same thing. Um, one thing to be careful of is, or are your layers. So you'll notice that I have hands in the foreground and hands in the background that look a little darker because they're further behind and under my hands. And um, just be sure that that you know that you're organizing everything and, you're, and you make you're making sure of where everything is at. Um, so here, one of the uh, things that I had to worry about is having the paper between my fingers. So some layers I want in front, some layers I want behind. And that's one of the most important things to consider or think about when animating uh, is your layers. So here I'm drawing a fortune. Well, not drawing, I, I'm using the text tool to do it, but I'm gonna do the real fortunes in After Effects. It's just a placeholder. So here I'm not taking the whole picture, but I'm taking one hand and I'm placing it inside of my uh, project just so I can get a couple of details here and there. Uh, now when you draw and you're doing an animation, sometimes things only pop up on the screen for a second, half a second, you know, a millisecond. And some things don't have to be so detailed. These hands are gonna be pretty prominent in the frame, so I'm adding just a little bit more detail into them. They're not just uh, circles. So here I'm bringing the other hand. And uh, if your drawings, if you're someone who can't draw that well and your drawings aren't coming out good, you know, how long have you been sitting there drawing? If you've been sitting there drawing for three hours, that's all right, but it's not long enough. If you've got nowhere in three hours, um, it doesn't matter because you should be sitting down a lot longer than that. So here I'm going into this. So I, I started a new window, a new file, and here I'm going to try to make this girl. This is the original girl that we drew in the first tutorial, and I'm because all the layers are separate. I have uh, the freedom, you know, to move them however I want, so I don't have to go and redraw the girl. Sure, there are things that I have to redo, like the pants. So here, instead of doing the ovals, I did have to go in and do a little bit of drawing. But I'd rather draw just the pants than to draw the whole girl again. So keep that in mind, too. If you're going to be using the same character over and over again in your uh, piece, uh, draw them in a way or organize that character in a way that could be reused. So here I'm liking how the pants are looking and I'm um, giving it a couple details. I'm using the brush tool and I'm, I'm making it feather so that uh, my lines aren't too uh, dramatic. And I'm basically done. Like all I had to do was change the pants, change the feet, and it's the exact same person from our first tutorial. So here, this money, this money is actually from another video that I was working on and you'll see me go layer by layer just changing a color overlay. I'm just changing the basic color of it uh, with a low opacity. And she's going to be jumping in money. So instead of having to create the money again, I just used what I had from another layer. Um, and so here, instead of actually drawing a bunch of money on the ground, they're, they're in a whole bunch of layers. So I could reuse those layers in another project. So uh, organization is, is very important. So there we have... Um, some clouds that I'm throwing in and these clouds are actually stamps so if you don't have a lot of cool stamps in your Photoshop uh, go online and you can download free stamps I mean those I got for free so uh, that's a we just finished the uh, money one here's the jail scene and you'll see I'm building a gradient to do my background and that's basically the sky and the back of the jail cell are just two 
rectangles with gradients on them. Very simple to do. Here I'm taking the same girl that we used in the very first tutorial. So uh, all I'm changing is the face. And yeah, uh, that's all I'm changing in this one. It's just the face. Uh, I don't have to redraw her again or anything. Um, I'm giving her a cool mouth here, that, which are basically just ovals. So remember, if you can make basic shapes, then you can make complex objects. Just, you know, work them, rework them, figure out uh, what works. Um, now, to make the bars, it's just a rectangle with a gradient on it. And the gradient goes from a light gray to a slightly darker gray. And then all you have to do is, um, if you hold down the Option key while you move a layer, it duplicates it. So I just duplicated a row of bars in front of her. And uh, so I'm going back and darkening the, the jail cell. Remember, you don't want your colors to clash. And if you have overlaying colors, you want to be able to separate them. Here's a tier. So this is really cool. I just used the Transform uh, Warp, like we did in the first tutorial, to give it a cool curve. And now... I'm only going to draw two tiers, one for the left, one for the right. But, I mean, of course, you know that we're going to need more tiers streaming down her, or, you know, coming out of her face. But I'll show you in After Effects how you only have to draw it once, and then with the animation, um, you can reuse that layer over and over again, and it looks like a whole bunch of tiers. And here I'm adding drop shadow to the bars, and it kind of creates a little bit of a distance between uh, the bars and the characters. So... Everything you just saw right now from that landscape, you saw trees and uh, the river, those are just big shapes, people. Uh, don't let them get you down. Now here, uh, if this is a stick figure that I'm drawing over. If you can draw a stick figure, you can draw a guy. I mean, look at what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just going over the stick figure and making it thicker. Um, so I'm drawing over this with the brush right now and making sure everything's on a separate layer just in case I want to move it later so that I can. Um, I'm just using the lasso tool kind of to find the shapes and there again there's an oval for a head. This guy's going to be in the background and you're not going to see him. Um, here I'm using Google to find a hat because I didn't even know how to draw a cowboy hat. So if you don't know how to draw a cowboy hat, uh, Google. I'd like to thank my sponsor Google.com. If you need to find something, go to Google. Uh, so here I'm using that uh, inner shadow and I'm changing it to a color so that it looks nice with my guy. And uh, I'm drawing his uh, hair. And you can tell that this isn't too detailed, but it doesn't really matter because it's in the background. And you'll see in the final animation, you know, he doesn't last on screen that long. And I think what people are going to be looking at most is his whip. So doesn't matter. And here you see I just cut out his arm there because that arm was originally part of the body. But I want to move that arm that's holding the whip. So uh, I deleted it. Well, I copied it and then deleted the original arm. And then I left the regular arm free or the new arm free, I should say. So here, my first attempt at making a whip, I made it, I made the whip, and then I tried to use the warp to make it flow, but it didn't work. So I just used the pen tool to, to make a, a whip with curves and stuff. So uh, if you want me to go more in depth on any of this, like I said, uh, leave me a comment uh, telling me that you want me to. It's going to be a longer tutorial. I mean, we're talking 40 minutes for part one, but if that's what you guys want. So here I found some gold, and it's simple. If you can make an abstract shape, an extract shape, you can make a pile of gold. And uh, there's all the little brush strokes that no one's ever going to notice or care about, but I know you guys care, and that's why I do this. So, and then little specks on the ground. Huh? Huh? Look at how cool that little mound of gold looks. So here I'm stealing a mouth. See, I'm stealing the mouth from the prison girl and just putting it over here. Remember, recycling is good, people. Um, here I took a couple images from Google Maps because I want to build a Chinese restaurant. And I didn't like any of the pictures, so I just found a sign, and I'm going to build the restaurant from the sign. So here I'm copying the little curve that the sign has, the little tile on top has. And check this out. I'm going to use a circle and just cut it in half and then repeat. Recycling reusing, keeping the earth green. Um, typing Chinese restaurant, and then I'm going to use a gradient 
a red gradient to go from light to a little darker red. Um, very simple. So, so far it's just been shapes uh, to create that. And then the back is just a rectangle with a gradient on it. Uh, and then the clouds, like I said, go um, get some cool shapes online. You can get stamps so you don't have to redraw little things all the time like uh, trees, clouds. I've seen a whole bunch of stamps for cool things. Uh, so that door, if you just saw, I, I drew the door and it was just a bunch of blue rectangles. And it makes it look like there's a door with handles there. So uh, always look for the easy way to uh, be creating things. Uh, this stuff's going to move really quickly and and the audience isn't going to have to look at it for too long. So the hills are just humps in the back there. Uh, just so you can see how I created that. And then uh, this little sidewalk space. So notice how the around the, uh, the restaurant is just a bunch of little gradients here and there. And even with just the gradients themselves, it creates uh, a distance. And uh, uh, here's for the shot where the character is going to be opening the cookie up. And like I said, you don't want to draw, don't try to draw the whole thing at once. Just pick things here and there that will let the audience know what it is they're seeing. So I think what you're looking at there is four different elements. Well, then the highlights, four different elements that I, that I use to create the cookie. Just the big slab of orange and then, you know some feathering brown on the bottom and uh, once you add the motion to it and it's put into context with all the other clips people are going to know exactly what it is and especially if you've got the fortune in the back um, so uh, in animation you don't always have to make things look realistic unless that's what you're going for if you're going for a photo real look um, so here I showed you guys how to animate the hands uh, this is me in After Effects, kind of uh, animating the girl. She's happy. She just finished her meal, so she's going to grab the fortune cookie, and she's going to hold it up in the air, and then we'll see the, the sun rays come in. And uh, you see me there manipulating the, the position of the fortune cookie. That's basically all I did. Uh, if you press P in After Effects on one of your layers, um, it'll let you uh, manipulate the position. Here I'm changing the money. So this is the splash. Our character is going to splash into the money and it's going to fly up. So like I said, you hit the little uh, stopwatch and then you you have two positions. You have a position that the money starts at, which is um, you know on the bottom of the frame, and then it moves up once she jumps into the money. So you have two keyframes for that. Very simple. One at the bottom, one at the top, and that's all. So uh, she's going to be jumping in to the money. So uh, part of the money on the bottom is going to come into the frame, and then she's going to jump into it. And originally she was going to jump into a pool of money, but that's where storyboarding comes in. Um, you don't need to add too many details if you don't have a lot of time. And I wasn't getting paid too much for this job, so I wasn't going to add uh, a lot of details. So here I'm going to show you how I do the tiers. So like I said, we're only we're using a left tier and a right tier. And you really could have only just uh, built one out in Photoshop. But um, what you're going to do is you're going to animate them going down off screen, right? So that's step one. And then after that, you just give them a little curvature. And after then you want to change their rotation so it looks like they're facing downward once they once they hit the apex of the curve and start to go uh, down so and after that it's just duplicating the layers and it looks like there's a, a stream of tears just coming out of this girl's face once she's in uh, jail so uh, of course you guys know what you're seeing right now uh, took me a long time hours and hours to do so if you're working for hours and hours and you're not getting anywhere good um, that means you're doing something right um, so I mean if you notice when I'm working on the timeline I'm adding stuff I'm deleting stuff but that's just uh, how long it takes and actually this was a quick job though so uh, what you're seeing here is probably six hours maybe to animate everything uh, to build and animate just because these were so simple they were just um, basic shapes but then after that 
even after I finished in After Effects, I still threw everything into um, Final Cut. And then I did the editing and then added the voice. Well, which was just my voice. It was a voiceover. But um, this one here gave me the most trouble. This whip. Uh, the guy's hand wasn't that ha hard to animate. I mean, it wasn't difficult at all. It's just a rotation on the shoulder like I showed you guys. And it's going up and down, up and down. The whip, however... You can parent the whip to the arm layer, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get that uh, flow that a whip does. You know, it slashes forward and then it whips back. Um, and, and you don't get that when it's just a picture. Now, what I could have done is drawn a, a whip in different positions. And as he moves his hand down, you'd see the different whips kind of move towards the girl and then snap back. But I didn't want to do that. So one thing I did was basically change the rotation on the whip and then even when that wasn't working I went into the uh, the Bezier warp in After Effects and the Bezier warp in After Effects kinda works like the transform warp in Photoshop that I showed you guys in the first tutorial so one thing I want to do to accentuate the hits every time she gets hit with a whip is to add this and it's like an orange or a, a yellow spark looking thing and every time she gets hit, I want one to pop up. So it's only going to last for like a frame or two. So, you know, you can bring PNGs into After Effects and they're transparent. You can build them um, as PMGs in Photoshop and then bring them if to, into After Effects and then just animate them there. So uh, here coming up, you're going to see the sun rays that I add behind the fortune cookie. And it's just a stamp that I found online, and I make it orange, take the transparency off the back, bring it into, I save it as a PNG so I can use it, you know, in a project later. And then I just set it right behind the fortune cookie, so the rays come to the fortune cookie, and then I just rotate it. It's very, very simple to do. Um, there's a simple thing coming up where I'm going to take, when she jumps into the pool of money, she's going to jump into the pool of money and then swim through it. So I need a long strand of money for her to swim through. So here you're going to see me take the money and I'm just duplicating it. So you can see that long rectangle. That's the long strand of money that I made. And so as she swims through it, I'm just going to make the money move from left to right instead of having her, you know, actually move from right to left swimming through the money. So it's figuring out how to take your ideas and then build them into simple uh, images. So I think storyboarding is uh, probably the most important thing you can do because then you can draw the characters and see uh, how simple, how difficult it is going to be to draw them. So here I'm going to take five different clouds and they're going to pass, uh, they're just basically going from one side of the frame to the other side of the frame. So completely out of the frame on both sides but they're moving from left to right in the same direction as the money and it looks like she's just kind of swimming in this vast sea of money, which is what we want. And the last element is the uh, the money. So here you see it looks like the money's supposed to go to the right because I was going to have the money jump up and then fly back, right? Because the camera's panning, so the money every time she jumps up, the money would uh, would fly up, but then fly back. But then I realized that you can just parent the money. The, the money that's flying, you can parent that to the money that's on the ground and you don't have to create the animation of it falling back because it's just going to follow the money back anyways. So that's it for the second part and I just kind of wanted to show you guys how animating is done in Photoshop and After Effects. I didn't want to do something so specific as like a how-to because my how-to could be different from yours. Um, whatever scene you're building, it could be vastly different. So. If you know the basics, you can figure other stuff out. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. If you want to see the final animation, it's in the description in both part one and two. And I'll be doing some more uh, tutorials and I might do something more in depth. We'll see. But uh, until next time, peace.